Hello guys, uh, come back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on mathematics and three working on calculus. Uh, that is uh, the question of August 2014 that we are going to consider where we are given 4.1 to determine by making use of rules of differentiation, right? Your answer with positive exponents and in set form where applicable, meaning to say our answers must have positive exponents and also in set form, but provided that it's applicable to do that. All right, so let us see if the first part of our question, which is uh, 4.11, we have given y is equal to two square root of x minus two over x, and that is uh, four marks for that. All right, so let us just try to have our question aside here. All right, so we're given the first part of our question, y, which is equal to two square root of x minus 2 over x. That was our question. And we asked to apply the rules of differentiation. Where I say that if whenever you're dealing with this differentiation, you must have a condition of y being equal to a n uh, ax to the exponent of n, uh, where we can apply the derivative of y with respect to x, which is going to give us a n x to the exponent of minus n minus 1. The same format applies even if you are given y is equal to ax. You can even use this, uh, which is going to give us the derivative of y with respect to x, giving us a. The same if a, y is equal to a, then the derivative of y with respect to x in this case is going to give us a zero. That is uh, with respect to x. So meaning we need uh, these formats from this part that we are given. So how can we rewrite this? The first part, the square root from our laws of exponents, that's x to the exponent of a half. Make sure that you watch the videos on exponents, just on a revision, all right? Uh, minus 2 over x, this is same as minus 2x to the exponent of negative 1. We write this on top with a negative exponent. All right, so that's we can determine our derivative now with respect to x. Uh, as you can see, we multiply by the exponent. That's two times a half, which gives us a one. So that will be X. That will be a one here times X to the exponent. You subtract one. So that will be negative half. Okay. The same thing minus two here is going to be multiplied with negative one. So that's negative two times negative one. That's a positive two X to the exponent. We subtract one here. This will be a negative two. So this was supposed to be our answer, but as you can see, we are given a condition that this must be in terms of positive exponents. We have to rewrite uh, one times uh, X is just same as one. So to the exponent of a negative now is one over to remove a negative, that's one over X to the exponent of a half. Then from this part to remove again, the negative on X here, which is negative two, we are going to have plus two, this one over x to the exponent of two. So that's we have removed the negative to be positive exponents. But also, if it is possible to have a condition where we can leave our answer in said form, therefore we are supposed to simplify that part. Like here, we have got a x to the exponent of a half. Remember, before we had this a half. Uh, from a square root of x, we wrote as x to the exponent of a half, meaning to say we can rewrite back in said form. That will be 1 over the square root of x. Okay, this part, there's nothing that we can do. So you can just rewrite as it is, which is 2 over uh, x squared in this case. All right, so this is how we can simplify. As you can see, guys, what we need is to apply direct uh, the laws, the rules of uh, differentiation, which is the major part, which is this part that I have got here. Uh, so those of question uh, 4.11, 4.12, uh, which is y is equal to x to the exponent of 8 minus 1, okay, over x to the exponent of 4 plus 1, the derivative again of y with respect to x. How can we obtain this part? All right, so let us check what we are given in this case. Uh, this is question uh, 4.12, where we are given y is equal to x to the exponent of 8 minus 1 over x to the exponent of 4 plus 1. We might think of so many things in this case, or so many concepts. What, what can we do to find the derivative? There's nothing that you, we are simply having here. This is simply from our factorization. This part here can be factorized. We can factorize this. 
from which concept? Remember, from our difference of two squares, if we can write x, okay, let me just write in terms of a, most of all I've been explaining using a, a to the exponent of two minus b to the exponent of two, I said this is equal to a minus b into a plus b. That's a number that can be raised to the exponent of two. So meaning what you need is to ask yourself, how can we, is it possible to write x to the exponent of eight as a number of x to the exponent of something here, but that exponent that you have here to the exponent of a two, is it possible to, to have our x? So you can see that you simply have to divide so that you check which number is it was. You need to obtain eight at the end. So you divide eight divided by two, which gives us a four. So meaning to say inside here, the exponent that we are going to have is a four. So that's four times two, which gives us eight. All right. The same thing with minus one. Is it possible to write one as a number to the exponent of two and it gives us a one? So the lucky part with one is that one to the exponent of any number gives us the same one. So meaning to say one to the exponent of two still gives us a one. One times one, that's a one. So meaning to say we can factorize, we have got the condition here of uh, a number to the exponent of two a number to the exponent of two. We said we are going to have a minus b. So our a here is x to the exponent of four minus our b, which is b squared, which is one squared. So our b is one. So this is going to be one into x to the exponent of four plus one. That is a minus b, a plus b. That is our difference of two squares. Meaning to say this was going to be y is equal to x, to the exponent of four minus one into x to the exponent of four plus one. Everything over x to the exponent of four plus one. Take note, a squared plus b squared cannot be factorized, meaning to say we cannot factorize x squared plus one, uh, x to the power four plus one. So what we can simply do is to cancel these two because they are the same. So we are going to have y is equal to x to the exponent of four minus one. That is what you're going to have because here yeah, this is going to give us one. This is going to give us one. So we just remain with this one. So we can now determine the derivative of y with respect to, to x. So what would be the derivative of y with respect to x? We are now back. This is same as a one. So remember I said you multiply ax to the exponent of n. It's a n. That is one times four, which is going to give us four uh, x to the exponent of, we subtract a one on our exponent in this case. So we are going to subtract a one on our exponent. That's four minus one, which is going to be a three. Then we have got the derivative of negative one, which is the derivative of a constant. We do not have X as long you do not have X, but you are determining a derivative with respect to X and there is no X on that part whether they write as m to the power of two, whether they write as p to the power of whatever letter they use, as long it's not x, that derivative is going to be a zero. So meaning to say this part is going to give us a zero since it is a constant. So that means at the end, therefore, uh, the derivative of y with respect to x will be four x to the exponent of what? Of three. Since this part is remaining as a zero. All right, so that was the major part of our question, what we actually need to understand or to observe from this pa uh, part of our question. All right, so now 4.2, we are asked to determine the gradient of a tangent uh, to the following curve at the point where x is equal to two. And I said before that the gradient of a tangent is simply the first derivative of that given function that you have so in this case, we need the gradient of a tangent. So what we are focusing on is, is the gradient part here. The gradient is simply the derivative of y with respect to x at that given point. That is at the given point. So meaning to say here, what you, simply, what you simply need is to find the derivative of y with respect to x. But how is it possible? Because here we are given brackets. 
so that we can easily expand these brackets so that we can clearly see an expression for y. So what are we going to do to expand this part? Uh, remember from our, uh, from our expansion, x here x squared multiplies with x, so that's x squared times x, which is x to the exponent of three. Uh, x squared times one, which is going to be x squared. We are done with x squared. We move on to minus three. So it's minus three times x, which gives us minus three x, all right? We move on again with this minus three, minus three times a one. So it's minus three times a positive one, which gives us a negative three. All right, so do we have like terms? We do not have like terms. So we are saying we can find the gradient now because the gradient is dy dx. So what is going to be the derivative of y with respect to x from this expression? Okay, so let us differentiate. Here we have got a one, so it's three times one, which is three x. We subtract one, so that will be x squared. Plus two times one here, which is two. We subtract one, so that will be x to the exponent of one, which is same as x. And I said a linear expression minus three x, we simply take the constant, which is minus three. But the derivative of a constant gives us a zero. So this will be a zero in this case, meaning to say, we have the derivative of y with respect to x, which represents the gradient of 3x squared plus 2x minus 3. But I'm saying this is a gradient, this one is a gradient expression. What we need is the exact gradient when x is equal to 2. So we can substitute the value of x that we are given, which is 2. So that will be 3 into 2 squared plus two into two minus three. So this gives us the exact gradient when X is equal to two. We are going to obtain a gradient of uh, positive 13. All right, so that is uh, how we can simplify uh, this part. What we need is just uh, a proper understanding of the concept of the gradient to say the gradient of a time, as long we are dealing with a gradient, it's the first derivative at the given point. That means you might be given in terms of f of x. Still, this is the same thing. It is equal to the first derivative with f of x. But what is important is at the given point. And at that point, what you need is the value of x because our expression is in terms of x. So you need to substitute that x that you are given at that point then you can find the numerical value, which is the exact value of the gradient. All right, guys, uh, that's what we had. Uh, more questions to come or more revisions to come from Amazon African Motives uh, till we meet again.